हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम डॉक्टर सौरभ पटवर्धन फ्रॉम नंदादीप आई हॉस्पिटल पीजी जी टीचिंग इंस्टीट्यूट एंड फेको एस आई सी एस ट्रेनिंग सेंटर सांगली महाराष्ट्र इंडिया इन अवर सेंटर वी हैव लॉट ऑफ टीचिंग एक्टिविटीज विच इंक्लूड्स हैंड्स ऑन ट्रेनिंग एज वेल Let's just uh, recap what happened in this case so far. So this was in my previous video where I discussed about the right size of capsular axis. So this was a diabetic patient with swollen mature cataract and I did a axis of around 4.6 to 5 mm and uh, when I was chopping the nucleus I felt that the the leathery nature of the cataract and excess stretching led to this anterior capsular tear. There was a radial tear during the nucleus uh, management and as I continued with the procedure this tear must have gone to posterior capsule and that's why you can see the tilting of the nucleus I realized that there is a posterior capsular dehiscence there so I stopped the surgery now I am sure you are curious to know what happened next so I shifted to now subtenon anesthesia so first part is to give little bit of subconjunctival xylocaine in the infronasal area so that it makes the subtenon anesthesia technique which is with the blunt 18 gauge cannula very very painless for the patient there is a little bit of discomfort while injecting but otherwise patient is quite comfortable wait for a minute or two for the anesthesia to have effect and now I am going to prepare a scleral tunnel which is around 1.5 to 2 millimeter away from the limbus and the length has to be 7 millimeter so it has to be a good size scleral tunnel because I am going to remove this uh, nucleus which is a big nucleus in a from the bag where the posterior capsule is already dehiscent so I don't want any resistance while removal of the nucleus I am going to use the visco expression technique as I will show and the uh, trick here or the skill here is to take this uh, nucleus out from the bag the CCC is small but there is already a radial tear so I'm going to rotate this piece you can see it is partially chopped so still the two pieces are joined to each other which is good because then I can rotate one piece slowly and then uh, uh, bring the other piece also out of the bag this is very important it's important that the entire nucleus is in the anterior chamber before I start uh, removing this uh, nucleus through the scleral tunnel. I am using plenty of uh, dispersive viscoelastic this is 2% HPMC and slowly as you can see using Sinsky I have rotated the nucleus in the anterior chamber and now the important technique is to engage this nucleus in scleral tunnel. Do watch my video on SICS where I show the importance of this engagement of the nucleus and here the important thing is delivering the nucleus without collapse of the AC because we don't want vitreous prolapsing out of the incision so I have to be very very careful while taking out the pieces just lifting the anterior tunnel and then pressing the posterior lip that's the way to go so you can see now there is a radial tear right from the area where there is a anterior capsular tear it has gone back on the posterior capsule and the half of the PC is there absent so now I am going to start anti vitrectomy though there is very little vitreous because the anti hyaloid is most of the places intact maybe little bit of vitreous strand there so I'm going to use the vitrectomy probe in cut IA mode first to remove the vitreous from the chamber and then I shift to the IA cut mode where I use uh, the aspiration for removal of the residual cortex there is very little here because it was most of it was a mature cataract but it's important to remove it so that uh, we don't get post-operative inflammation it's important to have good foot switch control in some machines you get the option of closing the cutting completely while doing aspiration so that is a better option so I'm gradually removing all the cortex all around the vitreous is clear from the anterior chamber and I'm going to use three piece IOL now there is a big tunnel so I don't have to use a injector for putting the IOL in the sulcus so the trailing haptic first goes in the sulcus I want to place it horizontally because there is a superior radial tear so I use the Sinsky to push the haptic into the sulcus rather than rotating the aisle because it may go into the area where there is deficient anterior capsule so the aisle is placed now 0 180 degree which is 90 degree to the radial tear 
I am going to suture the sclerer inc incision so that it doesn't induce any astigmatism in the long run as well. And that's the end of the case. Uh, AC is cleared of vitreous. I just recheck. You can stick the conjunctiva back uh, by glue or by tiny suture, or you can just cauterize the conjunctiva ends together. All in all, it ended very well. Patient got six nine unaided vision because of the scleral tunnel. Hardly any astigmatism. So that's a nice way to manage a case of complication. A complication is not a complication unless it is not managed well. Thank you so much.